Hi, I'm John with Rio Grande. Watch how I take this and turn it into this using the True Shape Silhouette dies from Bonnie Dune and the 20 ton hydraulic press. Let's get started. Let's talk briefly about what the Bonnie Dune True Shape Silhouette die is and what makes it so unique. So the True Shape Silhouette die is called that because it corresponds directly with the Swanstrom disc cutter of the same shape. So you can pillow out a shape with the Silhouette die and you can go right into your disc cutter and you can punch that shape out. And if you work with Silhouette dies, you know that this saves you a ton of time. It can also make the disc cutter more versatile because now instead of doing flat shapes, you can actually do three dimensional shapes. So everything starts with a drawing. And what's really nice about the Silhouette dies corresponding to the Swanstrom disc cutter of the same shape is that you can make templates. And these templates can help you and not only to trace the shape, but to also lay out your design. So I traced my shape. I found where my stone was going to sit. And it's not exactly in the center of the shape. And there's a reason to that, because if you look at a puffed shape, the highest point of the shape is not in the center of the heart. Now, if this was a circle or a oval, then yes, the, the center, the highest point would be right in the center of the shape. But since there is more surface area in this part of the shape than down here, the metal moves differently and it doesn't puff as much where there's less surface area. So that means that the, the highest point of this shape is gonna be a little off center. So I figured that out and I found where my stone was gonna sit. Then I went ahead and I drew in my radiant lines where I wanted to place them and I can use the information here to transfer to my metal sheet. Now I can use the lines that I drew as a reference in shaping and cutting my wire to the proper length and shape. Okay. Since this is going to be a mirror image, you don't have to worry about drawing lines on this side. Just cut two of each one of these wires and use half on one side and half on the other. Once you get all the wires cut, then you can go ahead and set them into place and solder them. Now this is one operation that I like to use paste solder for. I don't use paste solder for full fabrication, but for things like this, it does make it easier because you can lay your wires in place. I'm going to try to do this around the camera here. And the paste solder will help them stay where they're supposed to be. All right. And I'm just kind of using the, the drawing as a reference as to where, how far apart I want to keep my wires. And then just going to work all the way around lay all the wires into place, and then I'm going to solder. Now that I've got all of my wires soldered on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the form and I'm going to try to true up this shape. And I'm just going to use a file. I've already been working on this. And what I want to do is I want it to set into my die just like that, okay? You don't want uh, the wires to be between the die and the metal on the edges because that will, uh, that will cause a, a few problems. It's not imperative, but it's either all or none. Either have all of your wires outside 
of the shape between the die and the back plate or have all the wires inside. So there are a couple of ways that you can use the silhouette die in your press. You can use the die just as it is with urethane and then pressing the metal into your die with that. And that will work to a certain extent and I'll show you that here in a second. Or you can use a containment system where all of the force of the urethane will be going straight down into your die instead of being pushed out. And I'll show you that here in a second as well. Let's start off with without a container and see what we've got. Before we use the die, I want to point out a couple of things. So there is a right side and a wrong side to this. So if you look at this side, you can see that this line is nice and straight. It's also got a number. This is the number plate. If you look on the back side of it, you're going to see that this is not a really straight line. So this side, the shape is, is perfectly symmetrical. So if you wanted to make a bead, for instance, with two domed shapes, you can press two shapes through this side of the die and put them together to create a bead. So just remember, whenever you are going to use this, you always want to press your shape through the side of the die that has the number stamped in it. Another thing is, this is going to be a really sharp edge. And what you want to do is you want to just take a little bit of sandpaper, 320, 400 grit, something like that, um, and, and just knock the edge down. You're not, going to, you're not going to change the shape of this. All you want to do is just take that sharp edge off. If you don't, it will it'll actually cut into your shape and it will cause your shape to blow out prematurely. Okay, I'm going to do a couple demonstrations here. One with uncontained urethane and another with a contained urethane. And we're going to see the difference between the two. So I've got my die set up. I've got the shape directly in the, that I'm actually, the shape that I am going to press out directly in the center of the press. And I will lay a piece of metal in place and my urethane in place. And now I don't want to take this urethane uncontained like this beyond about half the thickness. So I'm going to compress this urethane, maybe half the thickness. The reason you don't want to do any more than that is you can actually rip your urethane and then you have destroyed your urethane. So I'm not exactly sure what pressure we will get up to, but we'll go ahead and watch the pressure gauge as well. But the main thing is, is I want to look right now for only about half the thickness because I don't want to destroy my urethane. So here we go. Okay, so now let's do one in a container. Okay, so I'm going to load my die into the container. Remember, the number needs to be up because this is the side we're pressing our part through. I'm going to align that in the center of my container. Tighten up the little set screw there. And then drop my piece of metal in and drop my urethane in. And then this is an aluminum pusher. Just like before, I'm going to make sure that my stack is in the center of my press and I'm going to press. Now let's go ahead and compare the two. All right, let's go ahead and look at what I've got here. So the piece on the right is the piece that was done with the uncontained urethane. Just the urethane was sitting on top of the stack and I compressed it to about half the thickness. 
I was at about a thousand PSI and I definitely would not want to have taken it any further than that because the urethane, I, I would have ripped my urethane. The one on the left is the one that was done in the container. And being that the container did not allow the urethane to flow out horizontally, it flowed down into the dye itself, I got a lot more volume and a lot more definition. And this went to 2000 PSI. And that's where I stopped. And really, you're going to have to play with this and see where you need to stop for your the metal that you're using. And that depends on the alloy. It depends on the thickness. So here I took this one. It was about 2,500 PSI. And you can see that it blew out. All right. And it blew out right there at the tip of the heart. So think about it. You've got, uh, you've got over 2000 PSI forcing down on that little tip. And that is where it's going to, on any shape, something like this is where it's going to blow out first. So the next thing I want to do with this is I want to go ahead and I want to define this line just a little bit more. And I'm going to do that by using 95 durometer urethane going back into the container and, and giving it a pressing. And all it's going to do is it's just going to sharpen this line a little bit better and it's going to help a little bit more in finishing. And there you go. So you can see that this is a lot more defined than it was prior. And that's going to make it a lot easier whenever we're cutting it out and finishing it. All right, so I did the same process with my silver piece. And one thing I wanted to tell you, I forgot to tell you earlier, the wires that I have on here are actually fine silver. The reason that I use fine silver is because fine silver is a lot softer and they form easier whenever you're doing this. If you use sterling silver, then there's a potential that it can pop your solder seams because of the pressure. But fine silver seems to form really nicely in this manner. So now I can open up my disc cutter so that my piece will slide in. Slide my piece in there and it seats really nicely in the shape. So you just want to make sure that it seats down inside. And then I'm going to grab my spacers. These are spacers that are made by Bonnie Dune for disc cutters. And you can see that there is a mark on each one of these for the gauge. You always want to use a spacer on disc cutters because if you don't, then whenever you tighten this bolt down, it's going to put the disc cutter at a slant on one end. It's going to close. And then the punch does not go down evenly and do a nice cutout. So in goes the punch. And I'm going to actually use my press for this. You can use a hammer for it, but uh, since I have the press, I'm going to use a press. As with everything, I am going to put my punch in the center of my press. So you always remember to work in the center of your platens on your press. And I'm going to give it a quick uh, punch. <laughs> And there it is. So within just a couple of minutes, it went from a flat sheet and now it is a domed shape and it is cut out precisely to shape. Now to do this with just a saw frame and a saw blade, you'd still be working on it. And that is the beauty of the True Shape Silhouette dies from Bonnie Dune. I know it didn't look like it, uh, the solder flowed on this, but it did. It is solid all the way around. 
I was uh, heating the back plate more because I didn't want the solder to wick up onto the front of the piece. So I heated up the back plate uh, a little bit more so that whenever it did flow, it would flow out, but it did pull in my solder from the other sides and with capillary action, it filled in all the way around the piece. Okay, now I'm going to use the disc cutter to cut my back plate off. So go ahead and open this up wide enough that my piece will go in. Make sure it seats down there. Make sure I use the correct spacer on the other end. And now I'm going to go to my press and punch it out. And there the piece is. Back plate's cut off of it. Nice, quick, easy, clean cut. I'll do a little bit of sanding on the edge, but not much. It's an enormous time saver whenever you're working with something like this. And that's how you use the True Shape Silhouette dies by Bonnie Dune. And you can see that using the die in conjunction with the disc cutter is going to save you a ton of time. In the description below, you're going to find the links to some of the equipment that I used in this video. I hope you found the information helpful. And if you have any questions about how this equipment or this type of forming can help your business, please give us a call.